Welcome everyone to another Trabant video. My Trabant is now 95% done, so I want to give you a tour around it. And one of the first things I had to do was to align the wheels, because the car was always pulling to one side, and I'm going to show you how to do this in a very easy way. So there's one little issue at the Trabant, that the steering wheel isn't straight while driving, and I'm um, currently checking this with that simple method. So I have two small water bottles, I have a, a string along the side of the car and then you can pretty nicely see the setup of the wheels here. So you can see that the string is touching the wheel here and there is a little gap here which means we have a little bit toe in on the rear axle which is fine, that's what we want. Um, but here actually at the front axle you can see that at this wheel in particular it touches the the rubber here but there is a gap here so it's toe out and it's a little bit too much toe out um, on the opposite wheel we have a pretty um, pretty straight arrangement so it's um, pretty much zero degree there so um, this one is always pointing outboard that's why the steering wheel isn't straight while driving and um, it's very easy to fix so if we go to the engine bay can pretty easily reach that right there. So that's what we will change now. And then the steering wheel should be straight again. So let's see what we have on the other side. So you can see the bottle is here. The string is going to the front again. And we can see that here at this wheel, the string is almost touching here and almost touching here. So that rear wheel is pretty straight. And if we check this front wheel here, we can see that it's the string is touching here and there is a tiny gap there. So you can see it with the shadow. So let's take a tool and just uh, measure that. So what do we have here? So that is pretty much what we want to have at the front. So this is pretty much seven millimeters. And that's what we want to have on the other side. And by the way, the steering wheel is straight. So um, that's what we want when we are driving. So let's see what we have on the other side. Let's have a look at this again. You can see that the string is almost touching the wheel here. And we used to have four millimeter toe in on the other side. So it was seven millimeter, but three millimeter is the string. So let's see what we have here. So definitely the wheel is uh, toe out. So it's pointing the other direction. That's why the steering wheel isn't straight while driving. So if we have a look at this here, that is eight millimeters so which means we have to turn this wheel so we get the four or with the string seven millimeters here at the front as well and to do that i already um, opened up the uh, the track rod there so we can just turn it and turn it in the right direction and um, yeah then fix everything again and then do a test drive so now I adjusted the track rod inside to have the same value here as on the other side. So you can see that the string is now touching the rear of the wheel here. So we have a toe in instead of toe out, just like on the other side. And um, I wanted to have seven millimeters, which is that measurement pretty much here. And that's pretty much what we have right now. So now both front wheels should be the same. And the steering wheel is still straight, so that should work fine. I will just fix everything now and we will do the first test drive and see how it goes. So one little side note, in Germany it's mandatory to have two mirrors and we have one on this side, one interior mirror. So we don't need the one on this side. So this is how the car was being presented in the 1960s, that's why I drive like this. It's a little bit strange if you reverse with a trailer, but on the other hand, you can always look out at the back, so it's fine. And also, the car has new TÜV now. So, we are ready to go. 
So some of the Trabant experts will say that from the outside the car is a 1963 Trabant, although that is a 1986, so it's one of the last ones with 12 volt and electronic ignition and all the um, like updates. But from the outside it's a 1963 one. We have the old wheels um, with the hubcaps that was simplified later on. We have the round bumpers, we have the different shield underneath and all the applications around the car, so like the mirror and the door handles are either chrome or silver and that was the old look of the car. So let's go to the back. Uh, you can see that I also cleaned the fog light and reverse light so you don't have these additional uh, two lights here on top of the bumper and I have them now underneath here. So you can see there's a small LED uh, stripe and on the left hand side it's the, um, the fog light and on the right hand side it's the reverse light. Um, you can also see the plug for the um, trailer here because I'm pulling trailers quite often with this car and um, you can see that I also used the, the old bumper here so it's a 1963 bumper we have the old reflectors and everything um, like the lock and also the uh, Trabant um, name here is also in silver. So. I really like this 1963 look and the problem is just that all these parts are very expensive so all the door handles and all these kind of things they're much more expensive than the standard black ones but yeah I think it's worth it and now it's pretty much like I wanted it so the car is completely being painted um, it will go to the paint shop again uh, to finalize a couple of things and I also want a right roof and I'm going to show you in a bit why. So in the interior you will also notice that I'm using the old super thin steering wheel which is really a very different driving feeling and um, you can see that I got a little scale model of the Trabant and I put it here on the dashboard and um, I pretty much want my car to look exactly like this car and that has a white roof so I will also paint the roof on my real car white. Um, you can see that um, also the dashboard is done now so that is nice soft fake leather and um, this is uh, nice and shiny now all of, all of these parts were not very pretty before here were three switches that were not used so I, I didn't need them anymore and I 3d printed this cover to me um, so I uh, 3d printed this cover myself and I wanted this to be Auto Union Werk Audi because the Trabant was effectively built in the pre-war Werk Audi, so in the Audi factory in Zwickau. So where the most luxury cars uh, in Germany were produced before the war and after the war, after all uh, that happened there, they produced the Trabant there. Um, here another nice feature, so these are the official papers of the Trabant. And uh, here is your table in case you want to uh, calculate how much oil you need to add when you're refueling the car and as you can see I still have the old seats inside I have new seats there uh, I just need to adjust the um, like the mountings here because that changed over the years but you can so and at the back you can see that um, the rear bench is new um, there are also the old aftermarket speakers that Trabant drivers like to put in the car and there is also the dog of course so which is sometimes shaking its head while driving so that's really cool and yeah so I'm pretty happy with the interior so far um, I still need to add the radio uh, I just installed the speakers so as soon as I have the cables here and the time for it I will install the radio I also quickly want to explain to you the dashboard so we have uh, the speedo of course then we have um, our fuel consumption meter so we talked about this in my earlier videos but it works really well now with the new position and it's really nice, you can uh, really see the real fuel consumption in real time and it's, it's really amazing. So I um, always like to look at that while driving. Um, then this here is the hazard light. And actually this button here wasn't very nice anymore so I've 3D printed that. And the 3D printed cover we talked about already. Then that is the light, light switch, so that's parking light and that is the uh, low beam. High beam is then done with this lever here and uh, these are our windscreen wipers and that is the fog light. Down here is our fuse box, this is our plug, the 12 volt plug, that is the shock here underneath the steering wheel and 
that's our climate control. So if you pull something out, you open it. So right now we pulled the hot one all the way out and the Trabant is really good in heating the interior because we get um, warm air directly from the exhaust system. So not the exhaust gas, but the air which, which is bypassing the um, exhaust primaries and the muffler. And so it's really hot. And um, if you push it all the way in, then that's the cold air and it's closed. And with this lever, you can decide if you want air coming out of here, so to defrost your front windshield, or if you want to have it at your legs. So works really well, very simple, very easy to, to adjust. So let's have a look at the engine bay. Um, so I basically took every single part there was and uh, made every part pretty and then put it on the car with new screws and everything. So everything looks nice and shiny now. I also um, changed the uh, routing of the cables here slightly because usually it's pretty messy from the factory at the Trabant. So I um, put everything in these nice um, other tubes and so everything looks nice and pretty. And, um, and also all these cables are usually crossing over here. I, I never liked that. So I just put the wiring harness around here and then I'm uh, reaching the components. So <clears throat> I think it's better than um, when factory it's a little bit cleaner and it just, just looks nicer. Um, this here is our climate control basically. So that is the cool air that comes directly from the front like we talked about in my last video. And then this is the heating. Uh, heating comes uh, here. So this is the box with the fan. And here the air goes through the cylinder. So that is the cooling. Um, and also there is a bypass here. So we take air from there. Uh, put it in the muffler, it comes out of the muffler, which is here at the very front, so you can see it underneath here. So the hot air comes here, and here additionally, hot air, which is coming from the exhaust primaries, you can see this here, is being mixed in here, so you have a better um, heating. And then that is your box that's mixing everything, and here are your, um, your cables to control everything. And then it goes to the interior, so that's very nice. Um, our washer fluid, um, this one also looked pretty bad, but you can get them pretty clean and nice quite easily. And um, yeah, just uh, rearranged stuff and made everything pretty. And now the car is really working very well. Uh, also fuel consumption went down since the last carburetor setting update. So the fuel consumption I calculated now was around 6 liters on 100 kilometers. So that's much better than the 7 to 8 liters I had last year. And um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's just an, an amazing um, everyday car. So to drive the kids around or to pull a trailer and bring things from A to B. And it's, it's just amazing. It's small, it's, it's nimble, it's pretty light. You can throw it in a corner and um, it handles very well. So I would say, let's take it for a ride. So in case you were wondering why we had such a good video quality and a free channel dash cam in a Trabant, let's introduce today's sponsor, Vivo. They were kind enough to send me their latest model A229 Pro. And let's have a look what's in the box. about this camera is that you have a high quality front camera, you have an interior camera here and at the back we have a rear camera. 
and they have the latest state-of-the-art Sony Starvis sensor, so which is especially important at a Trabant in a very shaky car, so you can have very good video quality at daylight and in the night. We have the three channels, all on HDR, so really high quality. We have built-in GPS and even voice control, which is pretty cool if you're driving at a Trabant and you have voice control. Um, also, installment was pretty easy because the Trabant has the plug here, so you just plug it in and it starts and it was really easy to install that because you know the Trabant has all these um, like little channels up here so we can put the cables in there so really impressed by this so um, if you are interested in this camera check out the link below and there's also a discount code so the Trabant is such a good and useful car um, it has this amazing trunk that is the size of the actual BMW 3 Series. You can see that is the spare wheel. I put a nice cover around it so it doesn't look so dirty. And that is my fuel box. So if I want to refuel the car, I always have some oil here. I have a cup to measure how much I put in. That is the dipstick to know how much fuel is in your fuel tank because the car doesn't have a fuel gauge. And um, just some wipe. And then here is the mandatory uh, first aid kit in Germany and all the other stuff that is to change the uh, spark plugs but I never needed to do that until now and um, yeah so I renewed a couple of things so also made this black underneath so it looks a bit better so the hinges are new and um, it's a really big trunk and uh, really nice just need to connect the speaker cables here that's the next thing I will do and um, yeah all in all really good really useful car and it's a lot of fun to drive so I hope you like this new episode about my Trabant. It's a really fun car to drive. Now it's also clean and pretty, so I don't get my hands dirty all the time I touch it. Before it was really horrible, like every time you touch the car you have oily fingers because something was leaking. Now everything's fine, there's no puddle underneath anymore. And uh, it's really nice, um, really useful and really cool to drive because it's such a low weight. You can just throw it in the corners because of the front wheel concept with the gearbox and uh, engine in front. Uh, it's a very uh, safe driving behavior, very easy to handle, so really cool, it's a lot of fun. Um, if you're interested in driving a Trabant, I'm actually renting this car out. So if you're ever between Berlin and Dresden in the area and you want to drive the Trabant in its natural habitat, so in East German country roads, then come here and uh, you can rent it from me and you can get the Trabant experience. So see you at the next video.